Hi guys, this is Mr. Vandergriff, and I want to start this video off with an engagement piece. I want you to watch this video clip and tell me what you think is going on. Take a look. <laughs> So go ahead and just write down your thoughts, like what's going on? What are your observations? What are you wondering? Go ahead and pause the video and do that. All right, hopefully you pause the video. Um, obviously you probably identified this is a water tower and it looks like the water tower is falling over or collapsing, All right? And sometimes when water towers get weak, um, this can happen, or if there's a flaw in the design, they can fall over. You don't want water towers to fall over. Now, this one in Groom, Texas, was actually built to look like it was leaning, so it's not falling over, although it looks like it's falling over. And some of these towers are incredibly large. This one is in North Park, San Diego. This was just recently took this uh, taken, this photo, during the pandemic. And uh, this is in North Park. And this is 1.2 million gallons of water is held in this North Park water tower. Obviously, it's not used anymore, but it was uh, to give water pressure and supply and emergency situations in the uh, immediate area, in the North Park area there. Uh, 1.2 million gallons is... Roughly about 96 million pounds <laughs> of water. So that's a lot of weight to be held up. So I want to introduce the Toothpick Water Tower Project. It is due on Monday, June 7th. So you've got three weeks to be working on this project. And I want to go over the requirements of the Toothpick Water Tower Project. So here's the challenge, okay? The general manager and CFO, Craig Schmollinger of the Ramona Water District has hired Wiley Architecture Planning of Ramona to design a new water tower system to meet the water needs of the Ramona residents. Now again, this is not a real situation, right? This scenario I'm making up for the project to make it meaningful and relevant. I did talk with Craig on the phone and he gave me so much information about the water systems and water tanks here in Ramona. Now, you have been hired by Wiley Architect Planning and to design and construct the strongest and most cost-efficient water tower for residents in the downtown Ramona. Now, Kara Wiley is an amazing architect that has done amazing work in Ramona, whether it's the Potbelly store or just some beautiful homes, um, any building that you see in town that looks really classy and fits into our town of Ramona, um, she probably designed that. She actually helped um, design uh, the blueprints for our house as well that we built 12 um, years ago. Now, your water toothpick tower water project prototype must be at least 100 feet in height, hold a minimum of 250,000 gallons of water while weighing 10,000 pounds or less. So the tower can't weigh more than 10,000 pounds. We want it to be as light as possible so that less materials are used and that's going to keep the cost down, but it also needs to be strong. Now, again, for the situation, um, 100 feet, this is to scale it down. Your tower is going to be 10 centimeters and obviously it's not going to hold 250,000 gallons of water. It needs to hold one red brick, which is equal to that amount of water for our scale. And then it can't be more than 10 grams in weight, its mass, and that's equal to 10,000 pounds, right? So um, I'm going to go over all these requirements with you in just a moment. You're going to be utilizing your desi the design engineering process to design and construct a tower prototype for an iterative testing. That just means you're going to make at least two prototypes and then a final tower. You can make more, but each time you do it, it should be improving and get better and getting better. You will also use the internet to research design ideas and concepts that will help you build an optimal toothpick 
water tower that meets the criteria and the constraints of this project. So first, the toothpick water tower must be at least 10 centimeters high or higher. I wouldn't make it much higher than 10. Some people do 12, 13, 14. I've only seen a couple that are like 18. So again, the higher you make it, it's going to be much more of a challenge. Um, so you want to keep it 10 or a little higher than 10, but not under 10 centimeters. Remember, 10 centimeters is going to equal 100 feet in our scale for our project that we're building. The load requirement is a toothpick water tower must hold 2.27 kilograms for five seconds. Um, and that's a five pound red brick. I'm thinking of spray painting the bricks blue, so it represents water, um, because we're gonna be placing those on top. And so one red brick is going to equal 250,000 gallons of water for our um, scenario. The weight requirement, the tower must weigh 10 grams or less. 10 grams is equal to two nickels, the mass of two nickels. 10 grams also equals 150 toothpicks. So again, you can't use 150 toothpicks because uh, some kids have done that and then they weigh it and it weighs like 14 grams and they're like, wait a minute, I thought 150 toothpicks was 10 grams. Right, but you have to include the glue. So most people use about 50 toothpicks or less for their actual toothpick tower. And again, 10 grams is gonna equal the 10,000 pounds uh, for our scenario again. Now in the past, I've had towers that have only, they've had a mass or they've weighed uh, 2.5 grams and held over 50 pounds. Um, that is the half the weight of a nickel. So you can think about a nickel and then cut it in half and feel how much that weighs. Their entire tower weighed that and held over 50 pounds. That was absolutely amazing. The other requirement is the top needs to be flat. You can see right here for the testing purposes. So when you put it into the tester and the crusher, it needs to be flat on top. Um, also, toothpick tower requirement, uh, the toothpicks being used, they need to be standard toothpicks with a length of 5.8 centimeters. You can see right here, 5.8 centimeters. No round toothpicks. No round toothpicks. Why? Because they're five times stronger than these flat ones, and then it's not fair in the competition. We want everyone to have the same level playing field as we're designing these. So again, the diamond ones you can find at Stater Brothers or Albertsons. You can find them on um, Amazon. I'm not sure if they have them at the 99 cent store, but this is another signature home one. And the, these toothpicks, these are all the same size, flat toothpicks. And after you've looked around or tried to go to the store and you can't find them, um, I have uh, some at school. I've purchased about $20, $30 worth of toothpicks and put them in small bags, $150 for those and I'm just asking for a 50 cents donation so I can recoup my money on those uh, toothpicks. The glue requirement. Glue any type may be used, but remember certain glues are heavier than others. Hot glue is very heavy. Uh, white or wood glue seems to be working the best or the school glue, a lot of students use that. So again, uh, in review, your water tower cannot weigh more than 10 grams. It can be less than 10 grams, but it can't be more than 10 grams. It has to be 10 centimeters or higher. It must have a flat top. It must hold one red brick for five seconds. Um, the, the Only use flat toothpicks that are 5.8 centimeters. You must uh, build prototypes, at least two. And again, um, you can alter the toothpicks. You can cut them um, and, and soak them and shape them. Let's take a look. And then you must complete the research, design, construction, and testing essay with pictures. Um, we'll go more over the details. So constructing the tower. So if you take a look here, um, you're going to need your blueprints. And then you put a piece of wax paper over that. If you can't locate any wax paper, I do have some. I can give you a small sheet of wax paper to use. And then you start to lay your toothpicks down and glue them together. And if a little glue gets on the wax paper, it's nice. It kind of just pulls up like uh, fruit roll up. You do all three sides. Um, we were even doing this in my summer school class I was teaching. So what I would do is I would set your blueprints up here with uh, your wax paper and your toothpicks and your glue. And then I made a video that you can follow along in constructing your tower. 
This is when you get all three sides together and you glue them together. You can use scotch tape to hold it together and then take the tape off once the glue is dried and then this tower is ready to test. So if you go to my YouTube, uh, watch Mr. V, um, and the last two videos that I've uploaded, uh, this was eight hours ago, this was 51 minutes ago. Uh, this one is tips in building your water toothpick tower, and this one is how to construct your tower. Um, and I go over all those details. So please take advantage of those videos and watch those. If you need any help and you're struggling and you don't feel like you have support at home, um, you can come in before school, um, at lunch, at ACE, and even after school, and I will work with you uh, to help you become successful in uh, building your prototypes. So after you've built them, you want to test them. You don't have a tester like I do at school, but you can use books and different objects to test your tower, and then once it collapses, crushes, then you can weigh this maybe on a bathroom scale to see how many pounds it was holding you want to take notes and kind of make observations looking for patterns of structure and function or st uh, patterns of failure. Uh, so again, let me give you an example here. Here's, a, here's my son when he was in my class about four years, five years ago. Here's Samuel, and here's his alpha prototype. And so he designed it. This is his first design. And it looks like it weighed 3.6 grams. And here he, we are testing it. So let's take a look. So it's holding another one brick, so now it's holding two, which is uh, Get another brick. 10 pounds. That would be, what, uh, half a million gallons of water, right? Because remember, each brick is 250,000 gallons of water. So his held two. So then what he did is he made a beta prototype. He made some improvements. You can see the beta prototype here. And then I think he even made a third uh, prototype. And then here he is. We're testing this one here in class. Let's see, so there's five pounds, 10 pounds, 15, 20. Again, I encourage you to get help from uh, family members, but obviously you have to build it, but you can work together. My son would not let me work on it at all because I was, of course, the science teacher. was like, Dad, I'm doing this on my own. So that cinder block is 35 pounds. One, two, three, four, five, six with the cinder block. I think he was surprised it was holding this much as well. They can think what they want. Oh, it's starting to bend. Hurry, guys, hurry, hurry. Oh, crap, bro, that's gonna break. I see it. If you stuck your finger in there. Oh, no, oh, it's gonna crack. It's gonna crack. It's gonna crack. Oh, it's cracking, it's cracking. 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 It's so here's a slow-mo for a side view of uh, Samuel's tower. Let's take a look. I can see as it compresses, then there's some tension, and you can see where it starts to blow out right here. It crushes right there. So again, your final write-up, you're gonna be including like what was the point of failure. So here's, you're gonna write, after you've tested in class, you're gonna Make sure that you turn in your written essay and it tells you exactly how to write it, what's the you know expectations. It's just three paragraphs. Each paragraph, the first one's the design. Uh, it's described the design of your tower, the blueprint development. The second one is described the building process. You answer some questions. Again, you can give me more details. But I want to know which um, what modifications that you made to improve uh, what changes you made and then did it improve or not as you were collecting data, see if it was holding more weight. And then the third one, it says here to uh, apply the six scientific steps, the scientific method. We're going to actually be focusing on the science, uh, what was it, the engineering design process. So not the scientific method, but the engineering design process that's in another video I went over. So you define the problem, then you brainstorm solutions, then obviously you build a model, then you test that model, and then you make 
uh, improvements or iterations, we call it, of that model. And then, if at all possible, take a selfie with your uh, toothpick water tower, print that out, put it on the back with also your blueprints. You're going to attach your blueprints to the back of your essay as well. Um, and then once you come to class, we're going to do your final test. So this was probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, 18 years ago. Yeah, probably about 15 years ago. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> People get pretty, uh, get pretty excited. Uh, they test their tests. Let's take a look here. So again, you'll make a prediction of how much uh, water or, you know, bricks that your tower, that you believe your tower is going to hold. Let's take a look here. And then this was the finalists. So the ones that wouldn't break inside, we had a special day where uh, oh, my God. I, think, uh, I think it was close to 300 pounds. I'm 142 pounds plus all of the weight that they still would not break And then what we do is we, uh, let's take a look here. So what we'll do is let's say that you had a tower that weighed 10 grams 10 grams and it held uh, 90 pounds. So you would have efficiency number of 0.111 repeating. But let's say that um, you your tower held 90 pounds but it was only five grams, so it was half as the mass. So five grams and we divide it by, uh, it held 90 pounds. Now take a look at your efficiency number. It's much smaller, it's 0 0.0555 repeating. And let's just say that you, you were able to create a tower that was only 2.5 grams and it held 90 pounds. Let's take a look at that efficiency number. 0 0.02777 repeating. So uh, here are just some finalists here. Um, so the, here's the rubric. You're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to get points for your blueprints, for your essay, for how much it holds. Did you have different uh, iterations and prototypes, and then your efficiency number. It's all right here. We add up the points. You're more than welcome to redo it if you're not happy with your score to redesign up into the last day of school. And then this was when I was at Francis Parker a few years back, 2013-14. Uh, you can see category A. You can see first place. You can see these efficiency numbers here. So these held all the weight without breaking, and I couldn't break them. They would not break. So... Here are the efficiency numbers, and this is category B. This is the lowest efficiency number, but they did end up breaking. This lasted 15 seconds, 5, and 5 seconds. So again, just to kind of give you an idea of what you might be shooting for with uh, how much weight and the uh, efficiency number that you are going to try to, to uh, achieve if you're super competitive. Again, the minimum requirements is it holds one red brick for 5 seconds and that it's at, uh, 10 grams or less, and it's 10 centimeters or higher. Again, Toothpick Tower Water Project is due Monday, June 7th. So hopefully you found this video helpful.